can beat that now. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's still going to happen. Good. It's still going to happen. Say it again. It's still going to happen. Say it again. It's still going to happen. Amen. We, uh, Sister Becky's out with the flu this morning, and I was in bed about 10 minutes last night, and the rest of the night I was up, so I'm not feeling my best right now. I'm not shaking hands. I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to, in case I have it, I want to pass it on. And uh, so I trying to keep my distance. But I just want to, I just need to be in church today. Amen. Sometimes you, you don't feel like it, but you just need to be there. And I got to be here today. I feel, feel the, the presence of God. Let's just stand. Welcome the Lord to have his way in this service this morning. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Lord, we ask that you'll minister to every need in this place, God. Receive our worship, God, and be pleased with us today, God, we ask. And Lord, when we leave here this morning, let us say it was good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we just thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Glory to God. And the church says, come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just go right into worship this morning, lift up the name of the Lord. And... Uh, we got a message this morning. It may not be long. I don't have a lot of strength. So I'm going to save my voice a little bit. But I just wanted to share a very needful message. I think is needful for this, for this day and time. Let's worship the Lord. Oh, Nicole, will you take this to Sister Karen? I'm sorry. We're having trouble, Karen. I'm going to ask you to try to go live with it. You might have to start over from the beginning. How we worship you, Jesus. Oh, we just fill this place with our praises this morning. Oh, we just fill this place with our praises this morning. Who oh, is worthy? He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this morning. We glorify your name. You're holy God. You're holy. You're holy. Oh, how beautiful are you, Lord. It's your word and it's your love. Oh, how glorious are you, your power and it was your cross Are you, Lord? It's your word, and it is your love. Oh, how glorious are you, Lord? It's your power, and it was your cross. Hey! Whoa! 
crown of thorns, you became a king forever. And with a crown of thorns, you became a king forever. Oh, you saved me. And you rescued me. Just one moment there. He set me free. I give you glory. I give you glory. glory. I give you glory. glory. Jesus. I give you glory, I give you glory, glory, I give you glory, glory, Jesus, oh, you saved me and rescued me, just one moment there, you set me free, I give you glory, thank you, Lord, I give you glory, we give you glory, Jesus, we give you glory, Just begin to lift him up this morning. Oh, there's nothing like Jesus. There's no one like Jesus. I give you glory, God. I give you glory, God. Just one moment there, and he set me free. Oh, I give you all the glory. Oh, I give you all the glory. Oh, the glory, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy this morning. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy this morning. Oh, we just look unto you, the author and the finisher of our faith. We turn our eyes to you, we turn our eyes to you, the one who saved me. Oh, the one who rescued me. Oh, the one who saved me. And he set me free. finisher he knows my story he knows the end from the beginning oh he knows it all we look on to you we look on to you the author and the finisher the author and the finisher
Jesus, it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus.
glory reaches to the highest, highest mountain. Oh, mighty God. Just think about that. The blood that flows from Emmanuel's veins. Oh, mighty God. Oh, it flows right where you are. And it flows to the lowest. Oh, there's power. Power in the blood. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day. raise your hands in this place. I just feel the Lord wanting to minister right now. He's heard your cries. He knows your needs. He knows your discouragement. He knows exactly what you need right now. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, the blood. 
just a minute an old song just going to sing the chorus because I feel God wants to touch you if you got the, if you're able this morning just for a second can we just stand one more time I know I know there's a lot that we don't feel good and we're tired and, but just one second I want you to sing that chorus reach out and touch the Lord I just feel his presence is walking by you right now will you reach out to him hallelujah Reach out and touch the Lord as He goes by. He's right there beside you. Right there. Let him touch you right now. Touch the Lord. Oh, I see Tala Bosa. That's his presence. He will supply. Oh, we reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by. Oh, we reach out and touch the Lord. Wait a minute. I'm minister to you right now. As he goes by. I'm going to touch you right now. a clap of worship if you would hallelujah glory let's make a joyful noise they, they, they may not be many but this is this is the house of the lord hallelujah amen you may be seated i want to remind you i'm going to be doing this for a while now i want to remind you to <coughs> Because I think it's going to be a very special day. Uh, and that's our New Year's Eve service. If you've never been to one, you just have to excuse me, I cough a lot. Um, if you haven't been to one, I'm going to encourage you to come to this one. I believe this is going to be the most special one that we've ever had. And I, I just, I just tell you what, I, can, I, I could give you some prophetic stuff right now. And you would never believe it. I don't think you would even, it would probably go more near out the other. But I will tell you this much. Somebody say what? It's not over what? It's still going to happen. It's still going to happen. Now let's say it like we believe it. It's still going to happen. Amen. It's still happening. It's still going to happen. And it doesn't look good, does it? But I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Amen. And, and, and this is what we're going to see. I, <laughs> on that new year's on the new year's eve server <coughs> excuse me uh, what we're going to see is there's going to be a, a releasing of one of the greatest anointings that this area has ever seen yes. uh, thank 
I'll, I'll give you that much. <laughs> and you say, is it just for, sh no. I, I'm not trying to say we're special. I'm just saying we're going to be a part of it. Come on. We might be the first part of it. <laughs> I, I'm not bashful. I don't mind to go front of the line, <laughs> you know. Some people like to wait around, wait around. I don't mind a bit to get up front. And, and Sister Lisa was telling me this while ago, she says that, uh, I don't know when he said it, uh, he said Reinhardt Bunky was saying, uh, and you know, we know he's passed away and, and a lot of great men of God, but his words still ring on. He, he was talking about, how, how do you say that, Sister Lisa? About <clears throat> he was in an interview about four years ago, and he said that, um, his ministry started out, and he might as well called it a miracle-free ministry, that he didn't see miracles at all. He said, but he stayed humbled, and he would see God taking from one step to the next, and it was God growing him that way. And he said, then one day, the dam walls broke, and, the, and it wasn't just waves of salvation. It was tides of salvation. This is a confirming word from four years ago that's confirming what God even has spoken in this church today. I told Pastor a few weeks ago, the Lord kept speaking to my heart that he's going to break open the dams, that they're going to flow freely. And when, when he used the very words that God spoke to my heart years ago, and then we had a word in this church that it wasn't going to be a wave, it was going to be a tsunami of glory. Amen. So I'm telling you, this is a confirmation that if you stay the course, look unto him, lift Jesus up, and be, let him humbly take us to the next step and the next step, we're going to see that break happening in this atmosphere. We're going to see that anointing release, and it's not going to be waves. It's going to be a tsunami of his glory that's going to fill this area. Amen. And when, when she was telling me that, I remember a vision God gave me about five years ago, or four years ago, four or five, I can't remember, and it was about a dam. And he showed me his dam, and he says, well, what's holding the dam up? And I've seen things in there. I've seen stuff like unbelief or tears of this life and stuff. And it, the strange thing about it in this vision, and I have all this wrote down. I actually preached a series of messages, some of them here, some elsewhere, on this. But what happened was, all of a sudden, just one, one thing come out of the dam. Yeah. Just like maybe it was unbelief or just one thing popped out of the dam. And what happened when the water began to rush through by such a force, it busted everything else. Yeah, that's right. And it was a, instead of a little stream going down this mountain, it was a river that consumed everything in its sight. Mm. I still believe that. Mm -hmm. Amen. In, in fact, I believe that that's what it's going to take yes, to stir this, to yeah. stir this area. It's going Hallelujah. to be a move that's going to shake and rattle. And I get excited about God's Amen. word. Amen. We're going to lift our Sunday morning, so don't forget New Year's Eve service. That's going to be uh, at 10 o'clock, and I don't have Sister Becky behind me whispering all this. I'm having to read it. <laughs> I miss her when she's not here. But it's going to be at 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve, and we'll go into the new year. And so make plans. I'm telling you, I, I read this post from a preacher out of Florida, and he always has a great post, and I love reading his post. And he says, Sunday attendance is a Saturday decision. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say, if you want to be here on New Year's Eve, you better plan now. <laughs> That's right. Because you'll, if you're not, you'll get so occupied and, and busy, That's you'll true. plan something else. That's true. Make your plan to be, say, yes. God, I'm going to be there. And the anointing, I just believe this. this is, I'm not going to share the rest of my vision. I may share it that night, that the dam's about to break. Amen. <laughs> yes, Lord. I truly believe that. Thank you, Jesus. In fact, I could go on this morning, and I could give you all kinds of words and stuff, and uh, I won't do that. I can tell you, I've been in some dam breaks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it never happens the way you think it will. Never, not one time. You know, I, I told you about the move of God that stirred northern Alabama. Never happened the way I would have ever dreamed. It never happened. I mean, but then God moved. Oh, God. Just, I just think it's about to happen. It's happening, that's right. Somebody say it again. It's still going to happen. Woo. That's a word. I'm about ready to get up and shout. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to lift our Sunday morning tithe it off and give as God speaks to your heart. Uh, I never make a big deal about the offering because God has always blessed us. But I will say this, December, 
and January are the two hardest months for the church because, you know, we have, everybody has Christmas plans and all this, but our bills continue to go on. So if, you, if God speaks to you, just give. If he don't speak, you know what? Don't give. That's the way I believe it. Yep. I've lived by that for 40-some years in the ministry, and God has always blessed me with that. Brother James, would you come, if you would, please? Brother James, as he's coming, get your offering. Put it in your right hand. Hold it up. <clears throat> Just a moment. I'm going to bless you because God's going to multiply. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. This is my and my offering. Yes. It will do what God says it will do. Come on. The windows of heaven are open over me and my house. Mm -hmm. And such blessings have been released that I don't have adequate room to contain them yeah, all. Yeah, come on. Somebody better shout. Yeah, come on. I am the seed of Abraham. Yes. And the, <coughs> and the oak of God. Yes. Born to him is my inheritance. Therefore, I release my tithe. And offering into the fertile soil of the church. And the church says, Amen. Amen. Give us, give us. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the land. this old crowd going around, but before I minister, I want to do a little dance. My God's worth dancing to. Can I get some help in this place? Come on now. Let's do a little dancing to the Lord. Not to nobody else, but give it to God this morning. We're changing the service this morning. I want to give God praise again. I thank this church and I thank the, those that gave. We uh, bought 75 $50 gift certificates to give to the children's home. And they were so, give God a hand. <laughs> and it, the, and the, the director said that it was so needed. He said, sometimes we get, we just forget. Hey, Russ, you got something? Go ahead.
Good word, good word. I believe that. When, you, when we look through our natural eyes, that we never see, you know, it's, it's always when it looks the darkest that we see God do the greatest. But I, I do thank God what an awesome, man, I, what an awesome blessing this little tiny church was to the children's home, to them, to them kids. And <coughs> I was so touched by the kids, their, uh, what they asked for. There was very, very little toys, if any. It was just clothes and everyday stuff that we take for granted. But sometimes when you don't have parents or stuff, them are the things you need the most. And I thank God that God blessed us to do that. Amen. Uh, and we may not get to this year, but next year we're also going to begin to do something for the nursing homes. And I was just thinking this year, if you let me just talk just a second, get this out of me. <laughs> but I remember, uh, you know, you always remember things that God blessed you in. We used to always raise money for the nursing homes, and we'd just buy stuff like house shoes and stuff that they normally, the people that's on a set income can't have, can't afford. I don't know if you know this, but if you're on a, if you're on a disability or something or, or Social Security and you get put in a nursing home, they allow you twenty dollars a month or twenty five. That's it. And if you got, if you get a phone, that takes the twenty five. So a lot of these people in there don't have much. And so it's the little things that you can bless them with. And and I know you say, Pastor, other churches do, and I think it's good. I'm going to tell you something. Wouldn't you like to have enough, enough uh, stuff to last you a year? You know, it's so there's such a need out there. The greatest need out there is to the lost. I'm going to minister this morning, and you just have to excuse me. I, I got under the weather a little bit, and Sister Becky was going to help me, and she got big time under the weather, but we was going to have a little Christmas tree up here and have some presents and stuff. But I'm going to preach this morning on, let's open one gift a little bit early this year. How many know sometimes you need to be touched with something special and we're always waiting till that certain day. God has a special gift for you today. And you need it. God, I, I've heard this in the spirit. And I, as I begin to study this, I said, God, that's not, uh, that's not one of my top messages. And, and the Lord said, no, said the church needs to hear this. That they, they have a right to open up a present a little bit early. And we need it. Anybody here? Know people that's facing discouragement? Anybody know anybody that's, uh, that gets really depressed and down this time of the year? You know, suicide rate goes high. The pressure of buying gifts, receiving gifts, and whatever. And it's a shame that the way we celebrate the Lord's birthday puts such pressure on us. It, it, it's really a shame that it does. And then also, I believe this, and you can disagree with me if you want, but I believe that the enemy releases an all-out attack at this time of the year to make you feel insufficient, oh, yeah. to make you feel where you have that pressure on you. When I say the enemy, it can be the world. It can be demonic. It just, it's just there. It can be sometimes we put it on herself. You know, and so I want to minister this morning on that special gift that you're going to open this morning. How many of you are ready to open a gift? Man, I'm always ready. <laughs> if you would, go to Proverbs 17 and verse number 8. <coughs> and I probably will not speak too long this morning. Uh, would you bow your heads? Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for these people. I thank you, Lord, that, that I can be a part of this great family of God. And Lord, as it comes this time that we break the bread of life, God, I ask that you anoint my mind, my tongue. Lord, touch my body, God. Lord, you know my heart. And I thank you, God. Lord, and I ask that you open our hearts this day, everyone here, that the seed of this word can be sown in the good ground of the heart. Because without the sowing of the seed, it cannot grow and prosper into a harvest. Lord, let it be a thousand fold. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Devil, we rebuke you. 
that you do not steal, kill, or destroy this word. And the church says, if you would stand with me just for the read, if you're able, one verse this morning. Got it on the board if you'd like to read it. <coughs> Let me give me a drink of water. I got carried away in worship and my throat's just a little sore. A gift is a precious stone in the eyes of him that haveth it. And whether it turneth, it does what? It prospers. And the church says, Amen. you may be seated. I'm going to minister this morning about, there's times, and I see this so often, and I, I hope I'm going to cover a little bit this first, because if I don't get into it, you'll know where I'm coming from. But I see everybody is always waiting to get to heaven to get what God has for them. You know, they're always waiting until they get to heaven. And, and, and so I'm thinking, we're always waiting until Christmas. And God's got something special that you need right now, a special touch that you're going to have. And so here's what the writer says. He says, a precious stone, a gift is like a precious stone. Now, I want you to notice something. It says, in the eyes of him that have it. Number one is, if God gave you a gift, he thought it was precious. God don't give away bad gifts. He doesn't re-gift. Come on now. God had, when he gives you a gift, he says, that's precious to me. And it means something to him. And then in return, he says, who has it? So when he hands you a gift, and this is what I want you to understand before I preach anything this morning, that when God hands you a gift, and you may say, Pastor, all I've done was act like I opened a gift this morning. I want you to know something. If you believe the Word of God, it better be precious in your eyes because God just gave you something that was precious to Him. Amen. And so, it's precious. And then what does it say it does? It will prosper. And now, here's what I'm going to tell you. is There's people that's out here today that needs... That you need joy, you need a little peace in your life, you need a little security, you don't know what tomorrow holds, you got, you got things concerned in your life, and we're waiting till that last moment to open it. I want you to know something. I come this morning to open a gift, that's why I'm here. By, if I'd have went by my feelings, I would have never sh showed up. I'm going to tell you, 10 minutes worth of bed and I never went to sleep doesn't make you feel good. When your throat, you, you may not understand this, but Monday and Tuesday and even last Sunday, my throat was so sore it hurt from my mouth, I could not eat, down to my belly button. I've never had a sore throat that went that low. And I thought, well, about Wednesday, I said, Sister Becky, I'm over this stuff. <laughs> and then I... I and so she gets sick, and I'm thinking, I'm going to help her. She waits on me hand and foot. And then guess what happens? I don't feel so good. But can I tell you something? I wanted this gift. I'm sick and tired of going around with what God gave me and it's sitting under a tree somewhere when we need to reach and get a hold of it. It's time to open it up right now. Can somebody say praise the Lord? So I want you to very quickly, if they would, put up the book of Job, chapter number 38. And I want to show you something. Sometimes what we need most is right in front of us. This is what Job said. 38, 22, I think. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. I just want the first part of this verse. It says, Has thou entered into the treasures of the snow? And that probably says, Pastor, what in the world has that got to do? I want you to see this. Sometimes what we need is right here. And this is what Job says. Job says, In the snow is treasures. And as the snow melts... You begin to see what's underneath, and you begin to see it. 
I'm going to tell you this morning that we have allowed spiritual snow to hide what God has for us. In Mark, the fourth chapter, the 19th verse, if you'll just put that up there quickly. You'll have to pray for me now. I don't have the flow I'd normally have. I still preach. The cures of this world. Have you ever thought about this part of this verse, the deceitfulness of riches? Everybody says, well, God don't want you to be rich. That's not what this verse says. You know what the deceitful of richness is? It's when you think that money and materialistic things will make you happy. How many people this time of the year are depressed because they don't have the materialistic or the money or whatever in their life? It's the deceitfulness of it. The cures of the world. Come on, this is the snow that's covered around us. The lust of other things entering in. We begin to want things that we, we just don't need. Man, that you say, Pastor, you're preaching hard. No, I'm not. I'm going to bring this down spiritually. I'm not talking about materialistic things. I'm talking about that sometimes we're wanting peace and joy and happiness and, and the good things of life. We want healing. We want the blessings of God in our life. And we can't see in front of us and they're right there. We're missing them. And, and, and we, then we'll let the cures of the world. You say, Pastor, do you, can, you, can a Christian let the cures of the world? Man, we all do. Come on now. So I asked you today, <laughs> what melts snow? If we're going to open this present moment, we've got to melt this away. You can't, you can't open something you can't find. There's two things I know that melt snow. Actually, I'm going to put three in there. Number one, salt does. Number two is the sun will. And I'm talking about the S-O-N. And number three is heat. Heat will melt snow. All three of these things will melt snow. Here's what the Bible says about salt. He says that we're the salt of the earth. And that's Matthew 5, 13. He says, we're the salt of the earth, but he says salt that's lost his Savior, it's worthless. And so what are you saying? I'm telling you, salt that's lost its vision and lost its faith can never touch the gifts of God. There's a multitude of people. Can I preach a minute? There's a multitude of people in our, in our world that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I'm going to touch on that in just a second. But that's all they want. They have no other expectations until they get to heaven. But as I study the Bible, especially the four Gospels, I find that Jesus talked more about this life than he did that life. Really, the only thing he said about the life to come is he said, he said fear not. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not true, I would have told you so. But God wanted you to have life here and to have it right now. And so here's what I'm going to say. We, it's time that we begin to understand that we can melt a little snow. Now, we know the S-O-N, the sun's going to melt it away. He can give you any time if you touch him. But a lot of times we do not have Savior. And so there's something that we need to do. If you want to open something this morning, you're going to have to get off your seat of do-nothing and put on the, the work of faith and say, I want what God has for me. I have to preach here. <laughs> Let's talk about fire for a second. Very quickly. Go to Matthew 3.11. I, I want to just show you this. We quote this verse often. Just the last verse. He shall baptize you of what? I want you to read this. Watch that word right here. The Holy Ghost. 
Ghost. And what does fire do? It'll melt the snow. In other words, the Lord says, I will give you the spirit and the tools to melt the snow, to open the presents that I have for you when you want to open them. Man, that's preaching there. That's awesome preaching. And so now, I want to just go, I want to show you about the person just a second that gave us this, this right. In Luke 2.11, and then we're going to go to 2.10. Uh, I, you say, why didn't I do 2.10 first? Because when I was studying, the Spirit gave me this in first. <laughs> For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Now that's the greatest gift you're going to receive. Amen. That's the greatest gift. You can't have the rest of the gifts till you have this gift. I just want to say that. But let's go back to number 10. And the angel said unto them, first of all, he said, fear not. How many here is going through something? Would I embarrass you by just asking you to raise your hand? I'm going to raise mine. It's not embarrassing to raise your hand and say, I'm going through some stuff. Number one is quit fearing. If you're fearing, get rid of it. Because you know what fear is? It's just the opposite of faith. I bring you, behold, I bring you good tidings of what? Great joy and what? To who? You mean this verse just went to the Jews? You mean that even us Gentiles saved by grace has a right to open presents that God gave us? Now I won't preach it. Because I, I'm telling you what, when, you, when you, you're going through sickness, you're going through this, and you're going through heartaches, and you're going through troubles and on every hand that might be in the family, at jobs, it doesn't matter. You need to open something that's going to take you over the top that you don't let it drag you down. And then this is... So we know that we're bought for price and that that was a great gift for salvation. But I'm not talking about salvation this morning. If you're not saved, I'll, you can always be saved right now. But I'm talking about between now and the time you go meet God. Number one is in John 14, 27, Jesus promised us peace. What's the definition of peace? Peace means there's no fear. If you have fear, you can't have peace. Peace means that no matter what's going on in life, you know it's all going to be all right. Am I, am I preaching it right? He said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Can I speak right now? I, I, I can feel this in my spirit. I felt it when I was studying it this week, and I feel it right now. There's some people sitting right here. I'm not talking about on the Internet. There's people right here, right now, that you need the peace of God over you, and God says, go ahead and open it up. <laughs> right now. <laughs> Receive it. That your hearts will not be troubled. And so he promised us, the, the very man that brought us salvation said, I'm going to leave you peace. I don't know about you. And maybe this is a pastor thing, but I just don't think it is. I think it's a, it's a time that we're in, the stage of life that we're in right now. Have you noticed how lonely it gets? Anybody notice that? How, even though you may have a, a praying wife and a Christian family, but at times you, you're struggling, you think, I'm all alone. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you pray, you think they don't clear the ceiling? Anybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? Man, you, you pray and they come back on you. I know God's hearing them. I'm just saying how you feel sometimes. Have you ever noticed that sometimes, especially during the time that should be the, the best time of the year, it seems like it, 
that every little thing bothers you, your best friends, that they, they won't talk to you, or, or they talk to you different, and you think, what have I done? Am I preaching? I want you to know what the Lord said about this. He understood this. Why do we have to wait to, till we get to heaven and know that, there's, that we can have joy and happiness? Here's what he said. In verse 18, 14, 18, he says, I leave you, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I'm going to give you a comforter, and he's going to abide with you forever. Can I preach on us Pentecostals for a second? Now, I, I, have a, I have a right to preach on Pentecostals, because I've been in this 40, well, actually my whole life, I've been preaching Pentecostals for 45 years. Us Pentecostals, every time we think about the Holy Spirit, and, and not every time, but it seems that way. We're thinking about speaking in tongues. We think about shouting. And then we're good. But can I tell you something? The Lord wanted you to have the Holy Spirit that no matter what you're walking through in this life, you got somebody holding your hand. That's what he said. Not only is he holding your hand, but he's defending you. They tell me that the word comfort us there also can mean lawyer or one called along beside and all this. He's, he's there to defend. And so I'm telling you, some of us need a comforter. You ain't by yourself. That battle does not yours. That, the victory was won a long time ago. You need to turn around and say, I've got a comforter that's never lost a battle, that's never been defeated, that's never lost a soul. i got someone that'll go with me. John 16. This is one of my... This is one of my, John, oh, I didn't tell you, 1624. This has turned into one of my favorite verses of all my favorite verses. I love this. <coughs> Let me get the <coughs> drink of water. Excuse me. Oh, it's sore. Hitherto have ye asked, nothing in my name, asked in what? Why? You don't mean that, do you? Does he mean it just that way? God will give you a present just to make you have joy. We, we discussed this verse Thursday night in our teaching. And uh, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I used to be a sister that come here many years ago. She's done with the Lord. Every time I'd quote that scripture, she'd get so mad. And she said, I don't believe that. And uh, I said, honey, I, 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 wasn't, I was young and I wasn't too smart. I said, honey, God ain't going to change the word for you. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you that. It says that delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. I said, he's not going to change it for you. But she did not believe that you could have your dear desires. And I told her... Mark eleven twenty four, when you pray, the things that you desire, believe that you have them, and you show up. She just could not understand that. She was raised poor, raised in the mountains, and she thought it was a hard way. You know, you, and Lord, I'm not making fun of this song, but I even sing it sometimes. I like it. But remember that old song? Climb it up on the rough side of the mountain. Doing my best, make it home. You know how that should be said? The mountain may be rough, but I've got a comforter. And I'm going on the victory because it belongs to me. You see, sometimes we, we put things. And I'm telling you this. God wants you to have joy, and if it takes opening the present two weeks before Christmas, open the present and receive what God has for you, because God wants you to have peace and joy in your life. And he says, I'll do it. I'll bless you that you can do it. How do we open this present? 
You remember what I said? In order to see it, you have to have fire. Number one is, and I believe everyone is, you have to be a child of God. Number two is, you got to know that there's a treasure in the snow. How do you believe for something you don't know is there? If you don't know God wants you to have peace, how do you believe God for peace? You know, you know what happens if you, if you don't know that peace is right there? You know what you begin to do? You begin to bag God for something he's already given you. But if you know it's there, I'm going to find it. I'm going after it, Lord. You know why? I'll throw my salt if it don't melt it. I have my own right because I have a fire inside of me. Come on now. That melts it down. And so we first have to have the Lord. Then we have to know that we know that it's there for you. I'm going to tell you something. If I had a tree up here, you could verbally, you could see the tree, you could see the gift. You could see it. But you have to receive the I'm not going to carry that big box. I'm going to talk to Smiley Jr. right here for a second. <laughs> if I'm lucky. You got a buck on me. I don't trust you nothing else out of the dollar. I seen this man the other night. He's a horse trader. <laughs> <laughs> if I offer this man, if I throw this dollar up, he don't know I got it. And I, I tell him right here it is. First of all, he's got to believe it's in my hand. Yeah. Then what's he doing? Look at that man. Tell me he don't <laughs> like money. He's reaching for it. Amen? You see, this is what's wrong with the church. We sit there, oh God. Oh Lord. And God says, it's right there. It's right there, son. My hand's right there. It's right there. Reach and get it. Is this all right? So then what does he do? I, the Lord presents it. And when, it, when you see it, all of a sudden you begin to have a little more faith. But the dollar could have been there the whole time. If you don't get it, man, you ain't getting it. <laughs> Did you see that? You see how fast he got that? What's wrong with us? What's wrong with receiving what God's already given you? Is this all right? You see, it, oh, I hope I am. I'm, I'm running out of steam very fast. But here's what happens. I want it. Then I have to visualize it. I heard Ron Carpenter say this. If you listen to him, he's preaching. He said, every promise, everything that's done is a thought before it happens. Did you know that? He even goes back to the beginning of time when God created the heaven and earth. He said, God thought it, and it happened. You know, uh, I normally won't carry a cell phone on Sunday, but because Sister Baker said, I have a cell phone. Somebody thought this before it happened. Brother Travis back there puts internet and cable in houses. He has to visualize the house and say it's going to go in before it happens. It's a thought. If you don't thank it, you can't have it. Can I preach just one second? There's a lot of people, they're believing they're going, they have their thought sessions like this. It's Christmas, I'm sad, and this is going to be a miserable time of the year. And I'll just be glad when it's all over. You should get rid of that thought and put something in about God and say, this is the season that God has given me and the gifts belong to me. Don't go by circumstances of, of the things of this world. Don't let the deceitfulness of riches, don't let it bother you. And so we think something. And so I stuck at our, I ain't going to stick another one up, I can't afford it. <laughs> but first I had to thank that dollar. God thought about what he gave you. Remember what the first verse is? He cherishes it. If you don't think his joy means nothing, you don't understand God because it's the best he has. There's no better joy than what God can give you. 
I, here's what I used to preach, and, and I, I mean this in a nice way, so, so, so some of you understand this, some of you may say, we ain't preachers crazy. But here's what I used to preach back in the 70s. We had all the, and I mean it's nice because I know a lot of them. We had the hippies, and the love children, remember all them? You know what I used to preach to them? I promise you a better high than you've ever been on. People say, How, what kind of high you going to give them? I'm going to tell you when you come in contact with Jesus Christ and you reach and get a hold of something, you're on a high. You see what I'm saying? It's a, I thought it. And God done it. it was a, he's already done it. And so God's joy is something. I used to walk in, up and down the streets and people that was living on the streets, even back in them days, and I'd tell them, I said, you know, if you don't live on the street, God don't care. I said, but he can make you the happiest person in the world. You can have peace when you lay down at night and joy. And see, that's what they all wanted. Remember this? That's what they wanted. But we're, you know what the church was doing when they was doing that? Bunch of hippies. <laughs> I've actually heard preachers say, if they try to come to my church, I run them off. Ain't that sad? Because what they were hunting was this. Peace. God wanted to give them peace. They wanted peace. God said, I'll give you peace. Everybody wants joy. You know, and, and, and here's, and I'll, just quick, I'm closing. A lot of people settle for happiness. God never promised you happiness. Happiness is just something that pleases you in a materialistic thing. It can change in a moment. You know, you can have a, a bowl of soup and be as happy as you want. When you eat it, you eat it too. It might not set well. But joy doesn't go by circumstance. You can be on your deathbed and have the joy of the Lord. I've seen people shout on their deathbed. You ever say, I, I've seen this. God bless me to see this. I've seen both sides. I've seen people shout on their way out, and the bed would be shaken as they went to be with the Lord. What a time. Made me want to go with them. I've also seen people die that did not know God, or I don't think they did. Their family said they didn't. I'll never forget it. Family called me and said, we need you right now. And I rushed up to the hospital, the town I was at. And I go in there. I get there. About the time I get there, this woman codes. She, she's dead. Her, she was dying. There was two or three doctors and nurses. And they was hooking this up and hooking that. And I jumped right in the middle of them. This one nurse said, sir, you're in our way. I said, no, ma'am. I said, she, I said you've done your best. I said, this person's leaving this earth right now, and they need to know Jesus Christ. And I begin to holler in that person's ear, just call on the Lord. And I remember seeing her fight as her spirit left. She'd do this, trying to pull it back. I heard her scream. I, I thought she was on fire. She was screaming. She's reaching. I'm telling you, you say, Pastor, I don't know. I pray she heard me say Jesus and called on the Lord because I believe in last second salvation. But I'm not the keeper. But I've seen people. You see what I'm saying here? Is joy doesn't matter where it's at. Doesn't matter. I've seen this joy come down in the hospital. People dying in the bed begin to shake. People say, what's going on? It was because the Holy Ghost had come down. My grandma, I'll just give a quick, quick testimony. I stayed with her for five years, and everybody kind of left, and she was kind of by herself, and I was young, starting the ministry, so I went and stayed with her. It was a sacrifice, because she didn't have, she lived out in the boonies, had an outside toilet and all this good stuff. I drove up, I didn't want that stuff, but I had my grandma. I me and her sat many a nights and talked about God. I don't mean this bad because I don't know nothing about this, but she was raised primitive Baptist. Didn't know nothing about it. She, the first Pentecostal in our family, when we come from a large family, was my dad. First Pentecostal. Everyone else in our family was a different denomination. I didn't get to be there the night that she passed away. An engagement. But can I tell you what everybody said? Neither people had never heard it before. About an hour before she died, she went speaking in tongues. And she went to dancing. They couldn't tell her to keep her in bed. She had the old bed rocking and praising God. 
You want to know why? why? It may have tucked her for years because she never doubted it. She always believed me. But before she left, God says, you got one more gift you ain't open yet. My point is, don't wait till your deathbed. Could you imagine what might have happened to Grandma if she had received her gifts before? I'm not putting her down. Lord, I love that woman. I still love her. She was a, she's a part of me. I'd fight anybody to put my grandma down to this day. I mean, that's my grandma. That's my mom. And my mom, same way. My mom, for 50 years, she sat at Pentecostal church. She seen the Holy Spirit operate, seen the power. I'm closing. This is closing, final closing. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I just feel so led. Not one time did she ever enjoy the presence of the Holy Ghost in a mighty way. A woman of God could stand. and I, My Bible knowledge today is partly because my mom was a teacher. She made me study. Every single day of my life, I read the Bible. It wasn't, do you want to read the Bible? Have you read your Bible? And you best not lie. And here's what I'm going to say about my mom. What an awesome person she was. But she left some gifts unopened. I'll never forget. The day that ever funeral. And the life that this woman touched. I think the biggest funeral I've ever been to was probably my mom's. And I don't mean to upset she could stay up for Brooke Hart's, but Brooks had a big funeral. They were probably the two biggest. They showed my mom for two nights because there were so many people. They had to direct traffic. People come from everywhere. People would come up to me and tell me about my mom when she was a little girl. But the day of her funeral... When the man was got through, a good friend of ours was got few saying his words and ministering. Power of the Holy Ghost come down like a cloud. I've never done this before, probably since that I know of. Power of the Holy Ghost come down. I begin to worship God in unknown tongues. Other people did just the presence. You want to know something? Even though she was dead. God allowed us to open that present. I believe it. You say, you know, we, we put too much on stuff. You say, people say, oh, show me out the Bible. I don't have to show you nothing. I know it. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Some things it's just, you know. But here's what I'm going to tell you this morning. I don't know what you need from this. Anything you need is in that gift. You may just need a little peace, a little joy, a little comfort. This is to take you in. The next season, the Christmas. This is a special gift that God's presented to this church and to those that's here. Somebody say, oh, God, don't do that. But you don't know my God. My God says he loves me with all of his heart. You say, he ever give you special gifts? How many people, how many people here can raise your hand and say, God gave me special gifts? I see hands all over here. How many times was he pulled you out of a car wreck you didn't even know you was in? He gave you a special gift. How many times did you tuck your enemies and sprung their traps up because you wouldn't have to go through them? Don't tell me God don't give you special gifts. So I'm going to say right now this morning, I want us to open a gift. I don't know what you need. You might just need encouraging. The best gift... One of the best things God ever done to me one time. I'll never forget. He done it once, so I said, God, just to make sure I understood, do it again. It's when we first started this church, and we were, you know how it is, you struggle and you go on, and I'm praying one day, and I don't know why I said it, but here's what I said. I said, God, I just need a hug. I said, I need a hug. I said, my, 
I was at my green chair. That was my prayer closet in the church. And I was praying. I said, God, I need a hug. All of a sudden, I stood up, and I felt two arms go around me. And they hugged me so tight and would not let go. The Holy Ghost hit me, and I began to weep and cry. Sister Dot and things changed in my life. And so after a few minutes, it, it seemed like forever, but I'm sure it's a few minutes, it left, and I said, God, if it's not too much to ask. Now, I know it was an angel. Don't leave here and say, Bill said, God, come out there. I'm telling you, God sent one of his angels down just to hug me. Probably the Holy Spirit, you want to know the truth. <laughs> but I said, God, if you don't mind, I need to feel that one more time. I said, what you're asking me to do is a hard thing, and I need to know it. I said, if I'm going to stand like this, I need to know it. And all of a sudden, two big arms come around me one more time. And if you've ever been hugged by the Holy Spirit, you'll know it. It was different than anything I've ever experienced. Somebody said, oh, it's just in your mind. I want to tell you something. It was all over me. It was in my mind, in my shoes. It was all over me. And he gave me a hug. Because you know why? I needed it. And I had enough faith to reach for it. Now, can we stand? See, I don't know what you might need this morning. First of all, can you give God a hand clap? I didn't cough for the last 15, 20 minutes. You notice that? I believe in giving God praise. <laughs> My throat's still sore, but I didn't cough. Praise the Lord for a while. I didn't realize it until I got that water. I said, wow, I haven't been coughing. God's good, isn't he? Maybe I needed that. But I'm going to tell you something right now. What I need is just, I want one of them, just a spiritual hug. I don't know what you need. I'm not telling you to want what I want. Because you want to know something? If we all walked down here to a mile or somewhere, every one of us would get something different. <laughs> because every one of us wants something different. What you, what you want may not even impress me. But it's what you need. If you need something from God right now, I want you to let the Holy Ghost and fire and you begin to melt back the snow. And I want you to have a thought of what you're going to receive right now. You have to thank it. Before it, can, before it can happen, you got to put it in a thought form. You got it? Anybody need me? Wait a minute. Now, I want you to go back just for a second to when you was a little child and it was Christmas time and you got that first gift. I think, can, can, I, can I give you a little testimony, a little story? I'm full of them. Sister Becky said I need to write a book on them. But... I can remember the only toy I ever received as a child. We were very poor. We didn't get much for Christmas. Very, I was probably five or six years old before I got my first present, and I know what it is. Come a big snow, and since Christmas was on Sunday, that day, that Saturday, family had gathered in. That was our big Christmas family, come from everywhere and get ready for the big dinner. I'd never received a Christmas gift. And my dad and all the bunch of the family loaded up in cars and you had, to, you had to take something because it's so slick. You had to push, you know, they didn't clean the roads back in. We got to town, and I wasn't supposed to see it, but I peeked and seen. My dad bought me a 59-cent cap gun. I still remember what he paid for it. And you say 59-cent, nowadays you think, can I tell you something? That was the best gift I ever had. It got me in a lot of trouble bear hunting and stuff. <laughs> But can, I'm saying that to say this. It may not seem like much to nobody else, but it's something to you because it, it's precious in God's eyes. Now, how many has got your thought right now? Hallelujah. Brother Tony, would you just come up here and release this into the people? I, I appreciate Brother Tony. He, he's all time getting on me for not having faith. <laughs> He plays this. We dog it. Right now, in Jesus' name, we, re we release what the Holy Spirit is releasing to each and every person right now. Thank you, Jesus. The Holy Ghost and fire, fire, fire. Thank you, Jesus. Now rejoice and say thank you. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Tony. Just remember, don't be ashamed. Tear it open. I'm just going to let the Spirit speak for a second. It will just say. You see, I'm telling you, you can tear it open. The greatest pleasures I ever had in, in my giving gifts is watching kids open presents. They don't care about the bows. They don't care about the ribbons. They don't care about, they just want to know what's inside. <laughs> Boy, I want you to have that desire opening up the presents God's got for you. In the name of Jesus right now. Give the Lord another clap of worship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't forget this evening, Brother Kane McBride. Did you get that right? Who? Make me. What kind of name is that, brother? <laughs> I'm, joking. <laughs> I'm joking with you. You just got to know. But he's going to be speaking this evening. Give him a hand. I'm excited. <laughs> Every time I've ever heard this young man say anything to me, it's been encouraging words. That's awesome. Awesome. Oh. <laughs> it's coming. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. I believe that. <laughs> Don't. You see, in order for it to happen, you first have to have a thought of it. Let that dam burst open. I, I seen a. Uh, Sister Lisa didn't know this, and she told me about that. But I told you about this preacher. I watch. I, I watch his post in Florida. He's in Fort Lauderdale. And he had a picture of his church. And he had every window on his church that was open with water coming out. And he said, the dam is breaking. <laughs> is that not God just confirming his word? Boy, we're going to reach some souls. Shake hands, smile, spend some sunshine, and don't forget this evening. God bless you.